Hey, what's happening, everybody? It's your favorite leather craftsman, the leather cowboy, right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the dirty, dirty, the dirty south is where I lay my head. You guys have been following me long enough to know this is where I reside, y'all. This ain't nowhere like being in the south. So uh, today I'm just gonna do a quick video today. Uh, I've been working on this custom leather guitar strap for one of the local bands uh, in the area. Uh, a local band called Free Beer, which puts on a phenomenal show. If you guys have never uh, caught a Free Beer show, you want to go if it's in your area. And right now they're getting ready for Rancho Palooza, which is a big, huge outdoor event down here in the Florida area. And so when I saw them perform in St. Simon's Island, um, I mean, the show was great. It was a good show. And I was like, hey, you guys need a free beer guitar strap. So you might have already saw the other videos that I've done where I did some free beer lighter cases for big lighters. Those are in another video right here on YouTube and on my other social media platforms. But uh, I just, uh, just wanted to do... Now, the free beer lighter cases for the big lighters are just something that they can put out there to their fans or they can be sold at the venue as well. So it's an avenue in a way for the band to make some extra money as well as have, you know, those little cases uh, are for the VIPs or their fans that follows the band around. So it kind of, you can work that a lot of different ways with the, uh, the management team of the band if this is the way that you want to go to where those who show that free beer lighter case or a band in your area, if they show that lighter case, they'll get like five bucks off for coming to the venue to hear to perform. But I wanted to show you guys this custom leather guitar strap that I'm working on right now. Let me see if I can get the light going. That might be too much light. But you can see the um, free beer logo. This is the band's logo here, two beer mugs. And I kind of started already putting this together. And the uh, next phase here, I've already done the border so now I'm going to go in and do the backgrounding tooling inside of the Sheridan design. But one thing that I wanted to point out in this video, ladies and gentlemen, again, guitar strap. So when, when the guitarist put this on, you can see the Free Beer logo on the whatever the guitarist is. And it features all of the artwork, which will be going down the back side of this. Now, this video actually can tie into small projects that can make you a lot of bank. Because guitar straps aren't that big of a project. They're not that big of a project. But these straps, depending on your skill level... Uh, with your carving. Now, these can be done with just simple tooling work. You can do a lot with your tools and just tool and design some nice guitar straps. Now, these guitar straps can go anywhere from 175 up to 375 depending on the detailing of the work, how much you do, and how, uh, how much detailing and artwork you put into each piece. But these small projects can, can create you a lot of money. But the feature thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the border. Now, this border was done with a very simple tool. Uh, let me get you guys the uh, tool that I'm going to use, and I'll show you the artwork. This tool is this one here. A nice, I mean, can I get that close where you guys can see that? Yeah. This is a nice simple tool here right in between the fingers now this tool is a tandy tool and this is d447 wow see i gotta get my old man eyes d447s d447s now the border that was used uh this tool was made to do this border here now, very simple tool work. Now, it is a lot, and they come in three different sizes, so you can get these in three different sizes depending on the project that you're working on, but it creates this border here. Uh, I would say it's what we call a nice ribbon border. Creates a little S pattern, and what you will do is lay down your 
uh, base border first. Now, some crafters will do the interior side that creates this little opening here. So you can go either inside or outside. It doesn't really matter. You just want to make sure that you take your time in using this tool and have the right, uh, you want to be consistent with the spacing apart because when you get ready to do the opposite side, you want this tool to go right in the center of these other two tools. And you can basically put the point of this one where these two uh, tooling work here, you will see a little tick in the middle from the stamping because the stamp base is only so big. So uh, wherever this one ends and goes over here to this next one, you want this tool on the interior or the exterior to go right in the middle center of that. Now, also, you want your other side to mirror. Let me cut this light off. This light might be too bright. Mm -mm. Now, you want this side here. Let me, let me dull that down some. Yeah, you want this side to do a mirror exactly of the opposite side. So this is why, this is what will create and make you the big bucks. So when a, someone is looking at the piece, they cannot tell the difference between the two. And this flows throughout the whole entire guitar strap. Now, as we continue to contour this out, and I'm going to start working on the um, the backgrounding now, and this is a key point because there are so many leather crafters out that's doing the Sheridan design, which Sheridan is very popular. Sheridan will always be popular in the leather crafting world, but I have been doing a little research on a another another uh, design that was pretty much forgotten about. And it came uh, became popular out of uh, Versailles, New Mexico, when that part of, now Versailles, California, when that part of California belonged to Mexico. And this is how you can tell your saddle makers back in the 1800s, and you guys can do your research on this too, this is how you can tell how much money a particular cowboy had. Because there were three notable uh, saddle makers at that time. One was out of Kansas, the other one was out of Wyoming, Sheridan, Wyoming, and the other one was out of Versailles, California, which was at that time was Versailles, Mexico. Now, the only difference that I have found between the two styles of Sheridan and Versailles, now some people might say Versailles, you, depending on how you type that in, uh, I don't know. I have to get with some of my Hispanic friends and find out the proper pronunciation of that. But the only difference between the two, the Sheridan and the Versailles, is the amount of backgrounding work. Now, in Sheridan, all of your backgrounding work is very small, like in between the two flowers and the scroll leaf here. So when I background this, you would have to have very small backgrounding tools to get into these little tight spaces. Another one is there. Another one is here backgrounding around this flower and the scroll there inside of the scroll here uh, and all the way out through the whole entire piece. That's another one. Uh, and you have to make when you backgrounding these, you want your artwork or your flowers and your scrolls to stand out more. This is why Sheridan is so popular and they command that high dollar value because all of your backgrounding tools have to be very small. Let me see if I can find you guys some where you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. Whether you are small backgrounding or um, doing larger portions. Now, let me get the back, all the backgrounding tools together. So if you're doing Sheridan, this is one key component that you want to keep in mind. The smaller the backgrounding tools, the more Sheridan you can do. So another backgrounding tool is this little pear shape backgrounding tool. This is very small. You guys can see that's smaller than my thumbnail, smaller than my pinky nail. This is very tiny, very small. And this one is uh, A116. 
Another one is this one here. Now this is a beveled backgrounder. So when I get ready to work around the borders, I can bevel that border down and it'll have the same matte printing as this one here. These backgrounders are the same, the, the pits are the same. So these two tools will work in conjunction around the border because it's beveled and you guys can see how beveled that is. So it works great around the borders. And then to get into those scrolling areas, you want to use this one. So the A116 and the bevel backgrounder is B802, B802. Now, this one here is another beveled backgrounding tool, but it has that uh, triangular type head to get into the points of around the, your vines. So when you're scrolling around here in your vine area, you see how that tool fits right in there? And that works perfect. It also works in conjunction with the pair. Um, the pair backgrounder too so you can get into those tight spots around the vines and the scrolls now this one here is just a regular oblong kind of square one still a very small but this one covers a little bit bigger area and this is just a regular flat it's not beveled it's just a regular flat so when you're into uh, your, your, your backgrounding inside of your design, this one does great. Now, all four of these have the same pit markings. So your, your backgrounding will be consistent. Now, some cases where you just want to do some smooth, smooth beveling, beveling uh, you can get off into these smaller tools here. Now, this is just a regular smooth beveler. And this tool here is a craft tool as well, B200, B200. And these will all be listed in the description in the video. Uh, another one here, this is a great edge, be uh, edge beveler, smooth beveler. See how small that is? All of these work very well with Sheridan. And this one here is uh, F. 895 F let me make sure this is right F895 F895 and then the last one you see how very small that one is wow another smooth beveler now this is a a angled beveler as well getting around those areas inside of the artwork where you need that beveled uh, uh, look uh, it works around the borders, especially when you're doing around your flower area or your scrolls that's closest to your borders. You want to use something like this. And that's very small, ladies and gentlemen. Look at look at all of these. Just look at the size. Of very small, very tight. And this these tools work very, very well with your Sheridan design. Now, the, what the opposite to Sheridan is the Versailles. Which the only difference is the Versailles, where Sheridan has small backgrounding areas, but the artwork is larger. The Versailles is the exact opposite. They have larger backgrounding areas, and the artwork is not so much. The artwork is in the Versailles is more so you can see the vines. Uh, I don't think they call them scrolls or or stickers in, in the Versailles artwork. That is more like a vine. You will see a lot of the lilies, the roses, uh, uh, or any flower or leaf that grows like on a vine type of plant. Uh, and that's where the Versailles, because those vines are very small, same pattern shape with that with that uh, S curvy flow, but the vines are very small. The stickers are not as wide and broad and then goes more into the circles of your flowers. You will see a lot of that. Uh, I'm going to just show you like this on this one here. You can follow the pattern on this where it goes up and down and up and down here and then it goes up and down there. You'd have that nice curved flow to your vine, to your stickers and your flowers in the Sheridan. Now, the Versailles 
is this is not as compact and tight in the artwork. So it'll probably be one scroll or one vine in this particular case, and it goes off of the flower, and then you'll see a leaf, 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 and then it scrolls into another flower. So you won't see any of these little scrolls as or buds where they're going to be new flowers, but this is the difference into the artwork. So I am, again, leather work, leather crafting is something that you, the crafter, how you want to define and set yourself apart. And, and I think with the number of crafters, now, there, there, now, don't get me wrong, there are a lot of crafters that use the Sheridan design in their artwork, and they have taken and used different flowers. I think your Steve Yizik, uh, I might be pronouncing his name wrong, so forgive me, Steve, if I'm mentioning that wrong. But Steve uses a lot of the daisy flowers. Uh, and then you'll see an, uh, other uh, leather crafters. There's a, a gentleman, a crafter in Thailand. that uh, Thai, Is it Thailand or Taiwan? Might be one. It's one of the two. But he uses more of the, the what, what we call here in the South, the angel bell flowers. Now, if you guys do, do look at the angel bells, the, they grow where the petal is upside down and it looks just like a bell. And they're notorious throughout the Catholic uh, uh, um, faith, where you see a lot of the angel bells. Uh, those flowers are very, 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 very popular. Now, he uses that into his artwork. So you can use the Sheridan design and change the flowers and the leaves and, and create that and master that as your own. But what you want to do when you do that, you want to step out there and and build a brand around that particular flower and leaves. So when people see that artwork, boom, when I see that daisy work, I know that's a Steve Yizik's uh, design. Or when I see the, uh, the angel bells, I know that's a design from the crafter in Thailand. I mean, and there are notorious crafters all out the entire entire world that uses different ones. I know when I see the uh, the, the 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 birds or the the doves, I know off the rip that that's a Jim Linnell's uh, artwork. Or Jim Linnell uses a lot of animals into uh, his artwork: the bulls, the the horses, uh, doves, and birds. And now, as as far as I know. With this swivel knife, Jim Linnell is a living legend, ladies and gentlemen. He does some immaculate work just with the swivel knife. Not a lot of backgrounding and not a lot of tooling and all of that. He does immaculate work just with this tool here. And you know that those are Jim Linnell's patterns. You know that off the rip. So I hope this will help you guys out along the way, uh, giving you just some design or some idea of what you can do with tools. Uh, you can do a lot, ladies and gentlemen, with those basic R8 tools that come into the beginner kits. Learn your tools and what your tools can do for you, and you can do a lot. So all you need is those eight basic tools and a good swivel knife. Now, uh, there are several things. Let me point this out real quick. You will see a lot of crafters going to the ceramic blade. Now, this ceramic blade is kind of expensive. And if you chip it, drop if you drop it, chip it, break it, you just buy you another one. <laughs> complete, complete. There is no fixing the edge or the point on these ceramic blades. Now, these come also... And uh, uh, another color, which is the red, the ruby blades, which the ruby blades cut like nobody's business. Now, you can do a lot with the ceramic blade. And this is an angled ceramic blade. You guys can see that. Very small, where you can get into doing some tight carving work with this one. And I also have... Um, now, I used, basically used my square blade, which is on this tool here. My square blade. Now, this one comes in your when you go to buy a basic swivel set. You will get this big square blade here. Uh, now, the metal blades, you can, if you know somebody who's a machinist, 
um, it doesn't matter if this one gets off, you can always take it to a machinist and they'll put it on the decimal system and they can get that point and that edge back. Now, these, if you keep these sharp, Keep them sharpened and you keep the dross off of them or the calcium deposits when you when you car carving, you can do a lot with these. Now the metal, these blades also come in the angled blade just like my ceramic blade. So you can get those just in the ceramic blade as well. But I generally use this big bold one for doing um, for doing a lot of my uh, edge cuts. So when I'm cutting, I'm just trying to find my screwdriver to tighten this back up because I'm going to use this again. But um, I use this because I have a border guide. Now, you can buy these border guides at Tandy. And I think they're like 79 cents. So get about five or ten of them. <laughs> I mean, they won't last forever, but I don't You know how Tandy gets. Tandy will discontinue something in a minute. So get you about five or ten of these. And then they're very easily to work with because you can adjust the width of your borders with, with this screw here and um, it, it also gives it to where you can angle that over and it's cutting so if I was to angle this back uh, this part is running on the edge of my my piece and then it's allowing myself to cut deep with the knife swivel back this way and and what I love about the square blade is it cuts a deep wide cut a deep wide cut as opposed to the uh, my angled ceramic or the angled metal blade those are for cutting tight corners because of the point and you can really do some turning and curving with that but ladies and gentlemen I hope that this got you uh, giving you a little bit of insight more or less on how we use these tools and to the different artworks and patterns now and this is a very simple artwork like I said um, invest in you some uh, um, uh, uh, drawing paper, not drawing paper, but the uh, transference paper. Invest in that. Buy you up to about three yards. And you can use this stuff um, not over and over again. Well, there is a tip that I'm going to give you how you can keep using your same drawing pattern so you don't have to keep drawing these again. Uh, when you cut these patterns out, you want to cover them in cellophane tape. This is regular cellophane see-through tape. And when you put that over your transferring paper, uh, it allows you to where you can carve over and over on that paper until you break through the cellophane tape. And then you can throw it away after that. But you can definitely get multiple uses out of that. And once you get your freehand experience up to where you can freehand your Sheridan design or your Versailles design, then you can just draw straight onto your leather and then you don't have to worry about using self uh, transferring paper at that point but this is something that's really simple very simple design ladies and gentlemen nothing extravagant but again these bring big bank to your crap uh, not just to your craftsmanship but to your business it expands your crafting craftsmanship to where you can you're a little bit more versatile now but it also can create you a lot of bank because this one guitar strap, um, even on, on the, I'm going to shoot the gap because I know the band very well and I'm also trying to do some other business with them. Um, so I'm, I, I would sell this belt to one of the guitars for about 275 because I've been working on this for about two weeks now, two, three weeks, about, about two, three weeks, and we're still not done. So it's going to be about another two hours of backgrounding. Uh, overall, it's going to be about probably about another four hours backgrounding, beveling, um, and then making sure that all of because I have to use my cedars, uh, your cedar stamp. Uh, you have to use your your camouflage, uh, not camouflage, but uh, your veiners in order to make those little ribs and ridges into the leaves. So we probably got about maybe four to six hours left of backgrounding and tooling just before this is even done. So that's a whole nother day just into the backgrounding and the fine tooling and detailing in this. And there's gonna be some other extra um, uh, swivel cuts in there as act, what I call accent cuts. So we're gonna be putting the swivel knife back to work in there. So you guys stay tuned for the final video. This is probably just gonna be some photos probably attached to another video before we go off into something else. But 
I'll see you guys on the other side. Keep crafting. This is the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters.